let's talk about the first watch. So here we have the perpetual moon. It's a moon face watch. It's a very big moon face, very easy to read at the bottom. You have for each moon face you have a vertical line that indicates here on the moon disk. In the center you have today, you have now. And to count when the next moon phase will take place, you have the white lines at the bottom. Oh, so wow. each white line indicates you one day. So you can count when this line here comes into the center, full moon takes place. So it takes one, two days until it comes to the center. The price point of the watch is uh, 28,000 uh, Swiss francs. Perfect. Here on the back side you can also see the power reserve. You have the power reserve indicator engraved on the, on the movement from 7 till 1. This red arrow, it stops at 7 when it's fully wound and then it goes all the way down. So it does not stop after 7 days but it runs for almost 10 days. Tell us a little about this piece because this piece is a little, um, a little different and it's also gold too, correct? Exactly. This piece is a perpetual calendar. It's a very unique perpetual calendar. You have the possibility to adjust the date forwards and backwards via the crown. And it has a flash calendar. This is very unique. So we are here 28th of February. The big date, very easy to read at 3 o'clock for the month. So we have 12 months in the, in the year, you have 12 hours. So we use this little hand from the center for the month indicator. So it points to 2 o'clock, this means we are on 28th of February. I go to the time setting position, I go forwards. And now you can watch how the date is jumping within one second. So you can still manipulate the watch without damaging the movement comes to 12 o'clock and now it jumps directly from 28 to oh, wow. 1 without showing the invalid dates. And as I told you, you can adjust the date forwards and backwards. So you go first position of the crown and you go forward or you go back. And let's see the back of the watch. The back of the watch features the most of the Petra 1 movement. You have the month indicator or the leap year indicator here on the back side so the black arrow indicates you leap year or one two three for the years in between you have a seven day power reserve two spring barrels typical for most of these cable module that can be replaced only with two screws for easy servicing and again you have a very nice case you have a shaped back side for a very nice fitting on your wrist and the price point for the Perpetual One is uh, very competitive. It's 41,000 Swiss francs for the gold version. The third piece is our novelty for 2012. It's a complete new movement. It's called Meridian Dual Time. It's a second time zone watch. You have here the red hand indicates you the second time zone. And the 24 on top indicates AM, PM. Oh, nice. So you have here, you have the digit 1 that's hidden under the dial, 2, 4, and then it goes back and forth when it changes at midday or midnight. So now it comes up to 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and then it jumps from 24 directly to 12 within oh, wow. one second. And now you travel. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, you travel out of the US. You have double pull crown for easy setting of the second time zone. You pull the crown once and then you unhide the second time oh, nice. zone. So a second hour hand for your destination time. Beautiful piece. Destination time, 7 o'clock, home time, 2 o'clock in the morning. And what's the price point of this watch? Price point of this watch is uh, 33,000 Swiss francs and it features Moses' first automatic movement. We have the luxury of being with the new CEO of the company, Dr. Zuber. And Dr. Zuber, first of all, thank you for taking the time to be with us as I know Basel World is very, very busy time. I would love for you to explain um, a little about why you joined the company and a little about the company and the excitement uh, for 2012 in the future. Well, thank you for visiting us. and. Uh the reason why I joined this company, this is, this is for me a very, very unique moment. I was running big companies, quoted, non-quoted, always in the fields of fast-moving consumer goods. Uh, I became 
two years ago a partner in a private equity company. And when I was approached by the shareholders of Moser to join the company and take over this uh, operational responsibility, it felt like becoming an entrepreneur myself. One of the nice things about the watches is, you know, five, six years ago, the big thing were big, the bigger the better, a lot of big bangs, and now in the last year, it's all about getting back to understated, thin watches, um, very classical looks, and this seems like this is what the, um, this is the sweet spot of the brand. So how does it feel kind of being in where now the new um, era is these type of watches being a leader in this? Tell us a little about that mindset. Well, this is true for small and beautiful. I mean, you have seen the quality. This is unique, uh, a very high positioning in the market. So we are looking for connoisseurs. Uh, there are a lot of connoisseurs around the world, but the beauty of our watches is really seen at the second glance. There you start to really understand the fascination of our products. Where is the money coming from? You know, now the buyers are all over the world. You talked about you wanting to build it in Europe and um, the United States. How about in Latin America or Asia? Is that a market that you're looking at too? Is, I've been hearing a lot of hot words or buzz that Latin America is a new uh, buyer in watches, luxury watches. Asia, definitely. We are already there. Uh, this is our second important uh, market region. Uh, Latin America for sure, but in a later stage. Excellent. Well, I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule, and I hope to see you next year, uh, and I wish you continued success with the brand. Thank you very much.